You smell that? I smell trouble coming. The good kind of trouble. The kind of trouble you and I are going to enjoy watching. We'll talk about that tonight. We have more cancel culture stuff. When's it going to stop? I'll tell you when it's going to stop. All that's coming up next on I'm Right. We're going to start out talking about my favorite thing in the world to talk about, myself. Do you know why I called the show I'm Right? Wait, that was the wrong shorter. Why I called the show I'm Right? Do you know why I called the show that? One, because I'm an obnoxious, arrogant, sociopathic narcissist who only cares about himself. Obviously, yes, that's a big part of it. But another big part of it is I am right all the time. And why am I right all the time? It's not because I'm intelligent. I have almost three years of community college credits. I went to college right out of high school, a university, Montana State University, and I got a 0.0 grade point average my first semester. I'm not making that up for TV, that's true. I believe I still have the transcript on the website if you're interested. It's true. It's not because I'm smart. I'm not smart, I am unintelligent. It's because I lack a certain shame gene, so I'm willing to admit things you don't want to admit. I know we are facing communists. I do. And I love history. I combine those two things, and that's how I always know what's coming, because I understand people. The reason I see things that are coming has nothing to do with intelligence. It just is a willingness to accept sometimes people suck. (laughs) That's just the bottom line. You don't want to walk around like a jaded cynic. I hate him and hate her. You don't ever want to be that person. Laugh, smile. You see, I do. But accept the political opponents you're facing here. There's something else brewing. And I'm about to be right about this again. Now, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to shake out, but something is brewing. This border crisis that's happening right now, I believe the Democrats had a plan for it. We've had guests come on the show and say as much. And what they essentially said was this. We're being flooded right now with illegal immigrants and the Democrats are going to come up with amnesty legislation to solve the problem and happen to help themselves politically. And I believe all that's correct. I believe that was the Democrat thinking. That was the Democrat plan. Okay, we got a bunch of people coming to the border. Not the end of the world. Maybe we act like there's a crisis for a while and then we'll just give them all citizenship. Maybe that was the plan. But I don't know that the Democrats planned for this part of the story and this part of the story is going to hurt them. It's going to hurt them badly. Joe Biden's losing his mind. This is not news to anybody who watches this show or anybody who pays attention at any level to politics. If you pay even that much attention for the last two years, you know this is not a man now in full control of his, uh, of his mental faculties. He's just not. He, he, can't, he can't talk. He can't complete sentences. He forgot the name of his defense secretary. Remember we played that for you yesterday? No, I'm not going to play that for you again. He forgot the name of the Pentagon, the president. The president forgot the name of the Pentagon. I'm not going off on that again. But Joe Biden, he can't do the job. Remember, the president of the United States of America, and I'm not crying for them. I mean, look, the benefits ain't bad. Crews around the world, Air Force One, private security. I mean, it's all right. It's a pretty safe job. JFK notwithstanding and Lincoln notwithstanding, it's a fairly safe job. You're surrounded by security, best medical care. But... It is the most stressful job in the world because you don't just have an obligation to lead the wealthiest, most powerful nation in the world. You are a beacon in America. You don't have to like that. You don't have to hate that. That is a fact. Other countries around the world look to you either for leadership or they look to you as someone to hate, but you are a beacon out there. You are a bright, shining light in the darkness. Joe Biden, I believe, I believe he crumbled faster than Democrats thought he was going to crumble under the pressure of the job. And that's even with the heavily, heavily protected schedule he's been under. You know, you hardly ever see the guy. If you do, it's very controlled or once every couple days. Or his wife, Dr. Jill, is there holding his hand, piping up, stepping in when she's not even asked a question. 
I believe Joe Biden is deteriorating faster than Democrats ever imagined, and it's torpedoing their amnesty plans. This is, this is the guy. The, the, you know what? Here's Joe. In our building, we have Mary, who's in the garage there, and then we have Cultivate the City, uh, which is an awesome rooftop garden. Uh, they exist on our, on our rooftop. But you can't, you're not going to be able to see it from, from here, but if they want to give a wave... I see him. Yeah. And then we also have Don't solar jump. We need you. <laughs> and then if I could just. How's he doing? How's he doing? You see it. You have eyes, you see it. Lost every day. And because he's so lost, Democrats are not able, and the D.C. media is not as able as they'd like to be, to cover for him for what is happening on the border. The system can and does, as we've talked about a thousand times, tell huge lies. Life-changing lies. They'll tell you the sky is green and insist you believe it. However, there's no covering up what's happening on the border. What's happening on the border is because of Democrat open border rhetoric, we are being flooded, flooded, overrun by illegal immigrants. And the reason the system can't contain that truth is They have so many illegal immigrants on the border, they're now being pushed into American cities. They're being pushed into Yuma and Brownsville and Chicago and all over the place. Dropped off at Holiday Inns, dropped off at bus stops. They're being flooded. The the communities are being flooded and these people in these communities are saying, uh, what is this? Who are these people? What is going on? So the DC media because they have access to the President of the United States of America, are starting to demand some answers. How are these kids being held? Where are these kids being held? How long are they going to be held for? How long is this crisis going to last? Yada, yada, yada. And you don't have, I don't think they foresaw this, you don't have a man at the top who can withstand that kind of questioning, withstand that kind of pressure, and the media... Yes, they're all communist hacks too, but they still have egos. They demand access, as we talked about, and they're not getting access. You saw them shouting at him, shouting questions at him as Biden was lost trying to figure out his way out of the mall. I think it's crumbling faster than they thought in this border crisis. If these D.C. reporters don't start getting answers, this border crisis... It might overwhelm them. And now, now that you're already getting them angry, you already see that they're angry, now that amnesty push becomes a lot harder sell, right? You see, it's one thing if things are fairly controlled down there on the border. Ah, there's just a few people. Maybe some amnesty. If you're being overrun and overrun and overrun and overrun and then you bring up amnesty, well, that's the kind of thing that loses you midterm elections. Lots of them. And the evidence is everywhere. We have Kamala Harris, now we know, just took another phone call on Joe's behalf. Leader of Norway, he needed a call with the Prez, with the big man. He gets Vice President Kamala Harris on the line. This is not the first time this has happened. Our Vice President is now routinely taking calls with other world leaders. This is unprecedented. Shoot, in history, vice presidents were mostly phased out and ignored, as they should be. Half the time, the vice president was an opponent of the president. And look, we're not getting answers. At this point, is this a crisis at the border? Look, I don't think we need to sit here and put new labels on what we have already conveyed is challenging. What we have conveyed is a top priority for the president. What our policy teams are working on every single day. They obviously, there was a trip to the border uh, this weekend. They are working uh, over the course of every day uh, since then on putting in place policies that can help address what we're seeing and, and help ensure that we are uh, keeping these kids safe and moving them as quickly as possible from uh, border patrol facilities to uh, to shelters where they can have access to educational resources, health resources, mental health resources, legal aid, etc. 
Okay, you ready for this? We're getting ready to play this again. Remember what I told you yesterday, what I've told you several times on this show, about how the world watches when our leaders speak? And you and I can't relate to that because we're Americans and we don't watch when other leaders speak. But the world watches when our leaders speak. And the reason, the only reason, we have a massive, massive crisis on the border of people pouring in right now is because people in Central America, people in these countries that have been ravaged, they watched while Joe Biden campaigned. They watched the things his political appointees say. Now, you're sitting down there. You're considering joining the next giant caravan that heads for the United States of America. Pay attention to what Jen Psaki says at the end of this and say to yourself, do I think I should go? At this point, is this a crisis at the border? Look, I don't think we need to sit here and put new labels on what we have already conveyed is challenging. What we have conveyed is a top priority for the president. What our policy teams are working on every single day. They obviously, there was a trip to the border uh, this weekend. They are working uh, over the course of every day uh, since then on putting in place policies that can help address what we're seeing and, and help ensure that we are uh, keeping these kids safe and moving them as quickly as possible from uh, border patrol facilities to uh, to shelters where they can have access to educational resources, health resources, mental health resources, legal aid, etc. I'm sorry? Medical resources? educational resources, mental health resources. Our response to the crisis at the border is to put out a public statement by the president's press secretary telling everybody who might be considering coming, come on up, we'll give you some school. Come on up. Oh, medical problems? Come on, we've got you covered. The old US of A will, will carry the bill for you. This kind of insanity it ends in absolute disaster. And I do believe the Democrats had a plan. I do believe they had an amnesty plan. Flood the border, give them amnesty, never lose another direction. I also believe because the crisis got so bad and because Joe Biden's mental abilities have gone downhill so fast, they're not going to be able to withstand this crisis. I think they bit off way, way, way more than they can chew. This crisis is about to get much worse unless you think they're about to run out of poor people in Central America. And I think we may have a real major scandal on our hands here. And if you set aside the human cost of the fact these are real people coming, coming and they are suffering, and these are real Americans who are going to suffer because we're being flooded by illegal immigrants, if you set the human cost aside, it's going to be entertaining to watch them try to weather this storm. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. Now, I'm going to make you uncomfortable again. I love dipping tobacco. Notice I didn't say I loved it. I love it. I don't do it anymore, but I still think about it. And because I'm somebody who, love it, who loves it like that and loved it like that, and you may be too, or you may have a friend or, or a loved one who does, does that as well. It's hard to quit for somebody like me, for somebody like them. I needed a replacement, a healthy replacement. No, I didn't want to walk around with a patch on my arm or chewing gum. I needed something to stick in my lip to replace that feeling. I get done with a big meal. I want to dip. I need something to put in my lip to replace that. That's why Jake's Mint Chew is so good. All natural. No tobacco, no nicotine, not even any sugar. That's right, fellas. Even the wife can't yell at you for putting in Jake's Mint Chew. Completely healthy. They even have CBD pouches, which really take the edge off. Go to jakesmintchew.com. Use the promo code JESSE. That's J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. That'll get you 20% off. We'll be back. You know, differences aren't racism, right? They're not bigotry. They're not prejudice. Sometimes differences are just differences. And what's wrong with that? That's a good thing. This is a, just a brief side note. I'm not going to go off on this long. But you know the only really non-racist environment I've ever been in? Completely non-racist? The military. The United States Marine Corps. My infantry platoon. 
No, no, don't get me wrong. There were all kinds of races in there. We had everything you could possibly imagine. Black people, Mexicans, Cubans, Guatemalans, Asians, Korean, Chinese. I believe there was a Japanese guy. There were, there were people from all walks of life. We had Jews. We had a Muslim. We had plenty of Christians. We had Catholics. We have, it was just all walks of life. So what did we do to overcome racism? Did we cancel each other, have each other fired, have each other written up? No. We spent all of our time making fun of each other. All of our time. 24 hours a day. You're stuck together. You're making fun of each other. And not only that, in the most offensive ways humanly possible. And we all loved each other. And I still talk to all my brothers to this day. Because nobody cared. And everybody along the way, with the jokes and the laughs and the ribbon and another guy, you figure something out. All human beings really are the same. We have different cultural values, maybe. We may look differently, and that's not racism to acknowledge that, but we're all just flesh and blood. And we're all just products of the culture and the parenting we come from. That's it. That's it. And I don't know why that simple two-minute conversation I just had is so difficult for so many people to have. I don't know why it makes people uncomfortable. I, we, the story today is Disney Plus is canceling Dumbo and Peter Pan and the aristocrats. I, I mean, some of the reasons are native people are pictured and referred to as redskins in Peter Pan. Okay, well, native people have darker skin. Why is that offensive in any way? It doesn't mean it's bad. They have darker skin. That's how they were referred to back in the day. If you find that offensive... Maybe A, you should turn it off, B, you should toughen up, or C, accept the fact historically there wasn't quite as much tolerance on the, on the big screen. The aristocrats pictured East Asian people with slanted eyes. Asian people have slanted eyes. It's not good or not bad. I have eyes I can see. Why is it offensive to discuss the differences? I think it's wonderful. I think it's awesome. We can have these discussions about things. And I'll tell you this much. Maybe you do think all that stuff is offensive for all the reasons they did. Fine. Maybe you do. I would suggest your life will be a lot happier if you're never offended. But maybe you do find all this stuff offensive. Fine, fine, fine. You do understand that there's always going to be something else to get offended about, right? It's never going to go away. You can eliminate all the Disney movies, movies, advertising campaign, movies of old, movies of new, movies in the future, sitcoms, music. You can get the boss fired, the colleague fired. You can have this canceled or that canceled or this team name or that team name. If you're somebody who walks around and I'm offended by that and I'm offended by that and I find this offensive, for whatever reason, maybe you think it's all justified, fine. You know you're going to have a miserable life, right? And I'll tell you something else. It's not Dumbo or Peter Pan or the aristocrats, it's whatever, cartoon movies. The point is this. What have I always told you? These people are communists. They are cultural Marxists. And what I want you to understand, what you must understand, it's not going to stop here because communists have never, ever gotten to a particular place where they've taken over so much and said to themselves, you know, I think that's enough, Bob. We're done here. We've taken enough. They don't think like that. It would never even occur to them to stop because it's not a political ideology. It's a religion of domination. They're never going to stop unless you stop them. And I'll tell you something else. You want to talk about making you uncomfortable? Are you, are you ready for it? Saying no has never stopped a communist. All right. Now, I understand you don't understand what home title theft is. You don't have to feel bad about it. Until I opened up my email and saw my home title with my signature on it and my wife's signature on it that I didn't put there, I didn't even know home title theft was a thing. 
And then I dig into it, and what do I find out? It's the number one cyber crime in the United States of America. It's the one the Federal Bureau of Investigation is desperately concerned about. Why? It's so lucrative, and by the time you find out, by the time you even call the FBI, the culprits are long gone with your cash, and they're gone for good. And you are on the hook to pay it back. And there's not a defense to stop it. You can try to track them down later, but you can't stop it unless you have home title lock. Home title lock will detect any tampering and shut it down like that. Go to hometitlelock.com. Use the promo code radio. That gives you 30 free days of protection. We'll be back. I mean it. I think he's in trouble. And I think he's going downhill faster than I thought. But look, I went to community college. Let's go to some experts on it. But first, (laughs) there is one thing about forgetting some old stuff. There's another thing when you're forgetting things like this, if you're Joe Biden. And I want to thank the the, uh, former general. I keep calling him general. My my uh, the guy who runs that outfit over there. Uh, I want to make sure we thank the secretary for all he's done to try to implement what we've just talked about and for recommending these two women for promotion. Thank you all. May God bless you all and may God protect our troops. Well, that guy, uh, that's his defense secretary and that's the Pentagon. Dr. Nan Hayworth of the Independent Women's Forum, current or former congressman. Uh, Dr. What's going on? That looks like a man who needs long-term care. It does, Jesse. Uh, The one question uh, I would love to hear asked, and I'm being entirely serious about this, the one question I would love to hear asked of President Biden, should he ever answer a question from the media, and I don't think, uh, for as long as he can remain president, I don't think he will, is, and I mean this sincerely, Mr. President, what day is today? Uh, Because I don't think he could answer it. Um, I've been among the many who have uh, expressed uh, concern about his cognitive capabilities uh, for many months now. And I do think we're witnessing uh, a decline right before our eyes, Jesse. And sometimes these sorts of phenomena uh, proceed in sort of a a step-like fashion, if you will. You just keep crossing thresholds. Uh, and it's certainly, even just the way the president walks, you know, that's that's a somewhat halting, mincing gait uh, that certainly uh, were I to have been a, a physician evaluating him for general health uh, would have put in my notes uh, as a, a sign of, uh, again, uh, diminished capacity. Nan, I, I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be, but I do have a bit of knowledge of this kind of thing just from the history of people I know and please I want to be corrected you know I want to be corrected if I'm wrong if you're going through something like this whether it's Alzheimer's dementia just getting old I don't know what it is and in the experience of the people I know they were always 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 told by medical staff you need rest and relaxation I mean they would worry about the paint on the walls being a relaxing color the sounds being relaxing That helps you get through it better. Mm -hmm. And this guy's in the most stressful job in the world. Now, is anything I just said wrong? Please tell me if it is. Uh, No, it's it's certainly, uh, look, these folks who have, and dementia, and I'm not, certainly not, uh, asserting a clinical no, no, diagnosis, but uh, if if a dementia condition exists, there are many causes. Uh, so Alzheimer's disease is certainly one, but far from the only one. Uh, and, and yes, these patients can easily become disoriented and agitated. Um, I don't necessarily see that the president is at that. Uh, certainly he's not in an agitation phase necessarily, though some people have even questioned that. Uh, but he does seem to be disoriented. Um, he clearly uh, cannot remember, as you said, Jesse, things that should really be top of mind for anyone, let's put it this way, anyone who actually has the mental capacity to serve as the president of the United States of America. 
this is a really dangerous and disgraceful situation uh, because anybody observing uh, Joe Biden in 2020 could recognize that he was not the man he was even a year or two earlier for you know whatever that might have been worth in terms of his serving as president. Um, I'm I'm concerned. I'm alarmed, and I'm angry. I'm very angry. Uh, at the people who are letting this happen because they are betraying the entirety of the American public uh, in order to uh, secure their own power. Uh, and that's a terrible, terrible thing. Nan, who are we supposed to be angry at? I mean, look, I, I'm not one who sticks my nose in anyone else's marriage. That's just not my business. So I don't deal with wives, husbands, kids. I just don't do that sort of right. thing. But what am I supposed to think when his wife goes with him everywhere, walks him off the stage half the time, jumps in, pipes up when she's not the president, when he's been asked a question, will answer for him. How am I supposed to take that as anything else but she is enabling this and encouraging this? Right. No, it, it's it's uh, the closest parallel we have historically is Edith Wilson. Uh, and when uh, President Woodrow Wilson, who was among our nation's worst presidents, uh, perhaps not coincidentally, but uh, Woodrow Wilson was in incapacitated by a stroke and Edith Wilson was effectively uh, <laughs> president of the United States in his stead. I'm not saying that's true of Mrs. Biden per se, but yes, she clearly is one of his handlers. Um, I would be reasonably certain that uh, other people are making the executive decisions for him. Um, he just, he really doesn't, he, when he signs executive orders, he will comment that he doesn't know exactly what he's signing. Um, it's, it, it's, it's bad and he needs, here's what, but here's what we need to have happen. Here's what's reasonable to ask for, Jesse. Uh, and it's not a requirement of office. It's not a requirement to run for office. But we need President Biden to have a, a cognitive evaluation, uh, the results of which are made public. We have a right to know. We do. We, we do. Uh, uh, Nan, I think we have a right to know what medications he's on. Do, do we know that? Do we know that? And I just haven't been clued in? I don't think so. I, I don't think we know that. Now, we know their taxes, uh, but I don't think we know his medical. I don't remember seeing a medical report on him. And ordinarily, quite honestly, I don't really care. Um, you know, I care much more about the policies that they espouse or or don't. Um, but no, we we, we th this has all been kept from us quite deliberately, no doubt. Nan, this next question, sorry to change gears on you here, but I really wanted to ask you about the Cuomo thing for a couple different reasons. Uh, one, you're obviously a New Yorker. Two, you are a woman who has achieved an astounding amount of, po of professional success for any human being that's ever walked the planet. So you've existed in powerful business circles. Yeah. Andrew Cuomo is getting all kinds of focus because apparently 9,000 women are accusing him of sexual harassment. And I'm not dismissing sexual harassment. Don't be a creep, fellas. To keep your hands off of people. Right. However... I'm stunned that that's where the focus is and not the thousands of dead people in New York specifically because of his policies. What Am I losing my mind? No, no, you're right. Uh, the, the far, uh, I would say, the far more important uh, topic, uh, the, the far more urgent and damning thing is the uh, nursing home uh, the scandal, if you will, to, to put it in a word, um, which uh, is under investigation, needs to be thoroughly evaluated. We need to find out um, how figures were um, prepared as they were and presented to the public as they were and who was responsible for that. Uh, in terms of the accusations against him, uh, you know, due process in all things. Every, every person who is accused uh, has the right to due process. I've always said that, whether the person uh, who's the subject of allegations is a Republican or a Democrat, I'm quite consistent about that. But that said, uh, Democrats, you know, Governor Cuomo's party uh, has stood adamantly against due process. An accusation, a mere accusation alone is enough. Oh, unless who? Unless you're uh, Joe Biden or apparently Governor Cuomo, although there is some rumbling now, obviously. Uh, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, the Democratic Senate leader, uh, I believe has uh, uh, now chimed in saying that, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's getting serious. Um, 
but the uh, you know you have to yes you know it's it's reasonable to wonder whether or not uh, th this is uh, the the counter uh, scandal uh, to the one that actually is far more troubling and has more implications for uh, the uh, governor's uh, more questions about how he's actually carried out the responsibilities of his office. Dan Hayworth, you are always the best. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. You are the best, sir. Thank you. Always my privilege. We're not done yet. Wait till you see these trick shots. Hang on. I hate weenies. And don't you remember a better time in America where musicians were the counterculture? I mean, maybe it wasn't a better time considering how all that turned out, but musicians were supposed to be the counterculture, right? There's this group, Mumford and Sons. I'll be honest, I don't know anything about them, but they have a guitarist, and he said something positive about that journalist Andy Noe's book. You know, Andy Noe covers all the Antifa stuff. And of course, today puts out this long, whining statement Quote, over the past few days, I've come to better understand the pain caused by the book I enforced. I've offended not only a lot of people I don't know, but those closest to me, including my bandmates, and for that I'm truly sorry. As a result of my actions, I'm taking time away from the band to examine my blind spot. For now, please know that I realize how my endorsements have potential to be viewed as approvals of hate, divisive behavior. I apologize as this was not at all my intention. Joining me now, the Daily Wire's very own Amanda Prestigiacomo. Amanda, I miss the days where musicians were offensive. Now they all just tow the party line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This this is the the counterculture on the right. I mean, the capitulation here was uh, not appreciated from the right. So you know, we have this group who is hated by the left because they dare come out and say something positive about a conservative reporter, and their reaction to apologize and say they're going to step away from the band was met with fury on the right too. So now they have everybody hating them instead of standing firm and just uh, you know being allowed to read a book that the left doesn't approve of. So it's uh, it doesn't work out when you cave to cancel culture. Amanda, explain to me the psychology of this, because I'll be honest, I see this all over the right as well. They'll say something, and maybe it's something that is offensive to some people. I personally don't get offended, but that's because I don't have feelings. But then they apologize, and like you just pointed out, then everyone hates you. Then, mm. then, you, then you're absolutely lukewarm and everybody spits you out of their mouth. Why don't people realize people are hungering right now for some mm. actual guts? How is this not obvious to everybody? Yeah, I think, I think they don't understand what this cancel culture thing is. And, and I think maybe there are some people who think, oh, perhaps I did uh, offend some people. So they want to apologize. They don't understand that they weren't actually offended, right? They're, they are targeting different viewpoints. And if you come anywhere near, you know, the line, they're going to, they're going to can you, they're going to sweep you up in this cancel culture. So they're apologizing and it's not going to be accepted. You know, you're, you're not, it, this is not like some remorseful thing where you learn and grow. No, no, no. You're going to be excommunicated from society. So instead of, uh, you know, kind of buckling down and maybe if you miscommunicated something, you can go ahead and clear that up. But capitulating to their side who just wants you gone, who doesn't want an apology, who doesn't want remorse or growth, it is never going to get you to where you need to go. It's never going to uh, appease the left, if you will. So you cannot, you need, you need, understand that before you capitulate to the left and give them what they want. Well, I want the right to understand it. I, I have a theory, and you're welcome to shoot holes in it. I say the right won't understand it because the right tends to cling to the founding values, and founding values of the nation are Christian values. Don't care if that mm -hmm. makes anybody uncomfortable. That's a fact. That's simply history. And Christian mm -hmm. values are, are, you know, equality and love and things like that. Good things. Not, obviously not bad things. Good things. But because of that, they're unwilling to acknowledge that there is an enemy out there that wants to destroy them. That if I simply ask for forgiveness, I'll be forgiven. Where you're not dealing with somebody mm -hmm. like that. You're dealing with somebody who hates your freaking guts and it's going to destroy you. Yeah, that, that's right. And that's just sort of a fundamental misunderstanding we have on the right. And I think, I think you're right. I think it is conservatives want to do right. We come from this 
religion of uh, repentance, right? And and of course, we're all sinners. We all know that we're all going to fall short. So we want to make right and move forward and grow and be given some sort of grace. That's our whole basis for you know our our, our religion and and uh, you know we see this in society all the time. But that's just not that is not the rules of the game. And we need to understand, as you said, they want to excommunicate us. They think we are. I mean, they, I mean, we have Nancy Pelosi, you know, the top one of the top Democrats, saying that you know, basically, people on the right are the biggest enemy, the biggest threat to democracy or to the United States. They live, they think of us as domestic terrorists, and they don't, they don't just think of Alex Jones that way, right? All of us. They think anybody who veers from the line is that is an extremist, right? We are all extremists. We need to understand that. Well, see, I've accepted I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an extremist, and I love that they hate my guts. All right, here's the uh, hard-hitting questions that uh, Jen Psaki's getting. Oh. We were promised a White House cat. What, what happened to that? Where is the cat? Today's a good day for the cat. Um, I don't have any update on the cat. We know the cat will break the Internet. We were promised a White House cat. What, what happened to that? Where is the cat? Today's a good day for the cat. Amanda... Even the D.C. media, even the disgusting D.C. media, do you think, and I genuinely mean this, do you think, like that guy, does he go home that night and look at himself in the mirror and think, man, that's embarrassing? No, I, I don't think so at all. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't think he thinks that. Um, you know, we're on two different playing fields. Kayleigh McEnany, when she was press secretary for President Donald Trump, she was literally heckled during a press briefing. Um, there was a Playboy reporter who heckled her and was shouting at her uh, like a like a protester, basically, during the press conference. I mean, what she dealt with was absolutely appalling. And now we see with Jen Psaki, I mean, these are they're all friends. If she doesn't have a response, she doesn't want to give a response, she will circle back, and that is perfectly acceptable. Um, these are these are two different sets of rules, and they they seem nothing wrong with it they are firefighters and they are getting the truth for us yes well i i, I certainly am inspired amanda i have another theory mm. i think the press is going to turn on joe biden when it comes to this border crisis for a couple of different reasons he can't he won't give them access because he, he can't function in a press conference the crisis has gotten worse than they think it's going to get and i think there are some people licking their chops to chuck him out the back door so they can take over yeah, I think there's always kind of this thought in the back of everyone's mind is like, when is Kamala going to pounce? <laughs> like, when, when when will be the last draw where they can kind of get rid of Joe Biden and uh, put someone more radical who would never be elected into that into that space? But I think for right now, I think with Joe Biden, yes, he's not providing access. And I think that could be an issue, like you said. But Joe Biden is just an empty suit. He is he is capitulating on everything. There is no moderate Joe. Not that there ever was, but there was at least some sort of pretense that he that he had some sort of like blue dog blood. Um, that is not the case. Everything the Democrats want, uh, all the radical left wing culture stuff that they want, that is being pushed through, and Joe Biden is basically appeasing. I think maybe the only time he kind of pulled back was fifteen dollar minimum wage, but that was just because they couldn't jam it through. Um, so they don't really have a reason to get rid of him yet. If he were to push back on the agenda, yeah, I think they could create a, 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 an issue there with him not providing access and use that to kind of get him out of there. But right now, they don't, they don't need to. All right, lastly, people find it difficult. My email inbox is filled up all the time with people figuring out what to do, what not to do to push back against all this cultural Marxist filth out there. And I have told people, be more purposeful about where you spend and don't spend your money. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I mean, I take that back. I am. But for the most part, I'm not perfect when it comes to that stuff. How do you do it? I know it's something you're passionate about. How do you do it? Yeah, I've always been a proponent of this. I mean, the left always did this and the like and the right kind of mocked it, right? Like we don't do boycotts, we don't do this, we don't do that. Uh, it's effective. Um, I know they have grassroots campaigns on the left that will target advertisers. I mean, in principle, right, we don't like that. Um, but if you look at the the broader thing that's happening here, um, we need to, you know, vote with our pocket. Uh, so if Amazon, is you know 
getting rid of books that uh, question gender ideology and you know not not allowing people to access information or viewpoints that they disagree with, is it in your best interest to give them you know fifteen dollars a month? Probably not. I mean, I understand right that like Amazon is the biggest one that people use, but if there's any way you can kind of tamp that down, you know, get rid of your Netflix, get get rid of some of these uh, these services that are are actively working against you because they are they are actively working against you to silence your viewpoint, to silence uh, the the America that we want. Um, they're they're working against you. So if you can you know, get away from that. I know there are sites online that kind of provide this sort of thing. I think there's like Second Vote is a good website. Um, they'll kind of show you who's, you know, what sort of ideology is being pushed by which companies and, and what's kind of coming after our, our values. And uh, yeah, anytime you can stop giving them money, please do. Amanda Presta Giacomo of The Daily Wire. Thank you so much. I'm glad you got to come back on. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll be back. I wish I was a good golfer. I've always wanted to be a good golfer. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say I want to be, it's not like I'm committed to doing it. I'm not going to practice. It's just one of those things I wish I was good at. I can function out there. I'm not missing the ball. Uh, as a quick side note, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent here. Fellas, ladies... You have sons, maybe even daughters too. A critical life skill is teaching your child how to function on the golf course. Not, not be an expert, but function on the golf course. I have seen more deals done on the golf course than I have in boardrooms over the course of my lifetime. You never want to be the guy who the boss invites out for some golf on a Saturday. Let's get some Bloody Marys and play some golf and go, I don't know how to play. I don't care if you're good or not. Figure out how to play golf. Now, that said, you're never going to be able to play like this guy. Oh, yes! Come on! Yeah! <laughs> oh! I, I, it's the first one that gets me. I would love to be able to chip like that. Who could chip something into a water bottle? It's like that big. All right, the other stuff is cool too, but it's the golf one that gets me. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.